just to make sure that I uh, got all my information. I think you know Susan? You know? Susan? Hello, I don't know. <laughs> we met once a long time ago. Oh, hi, Susan. So Good that you brought the big guns, Bill. Very nice. Excellent. Hmm. We have just a couple more minutes. Everybody's so quiet. We need to have like elevator music going in the background. No. <laughs> Andrew, your crew did an amazing job yesterday. Oh. My you. first time being at, at Reverie since March or February, probably, and they killed it. You're posting about it online, weren't you, Shannon? I did. You're pretty excited I, about the experience. I was very excited and very um, entertained at the one guy who didn't have a mask on and tried to walk in and was immediately sent back out and then tried to put his helmet down at the table right next to me that didn't have any chairs. I was like, um, no, please not here. He goes, oh, really? Not? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he was at least very nice about it and there was no confrontation, so. My mouth will get me in trouble for that sort of thing. We're, uh, I mean, we're, we're, and we got Tom Stoltz on, so he's, he gets to update the numbers later. So hopefully I'm still correct on this in a few hours, but we're doing pretty well with the numbers going down. And I think it's because people kind of get why we're doing masking, the importance of masking, and it's affecting the economy, right? Where if we want to open back up, we want people to get out there and spend money. Um, people need to feel safe. Uh, I'm not gonna get into too much info today because we have some guests, but I, I was on a Zoom with um, my Harvard class yesterday and they talked about this recession versus the last big recession we had. And the difference is right now people aren't spending. Last big recession was mostly because of credit uh, where people weren't lending. Uh, so uh, one of the, some of the data points showed that people just aren't going out and spending money, particularly affluent people. Uh, so one of the things that we got to work with our partners with is, well, how do we change that? How do we pretty much set up a campaign to get people to spend locally, not just on Amazon and spend more money? Um, but yeah, it, I think mass and getting people comfortable going to the coffee shop, going out is going to be key to that. So, so good job, Shannon, and encouraging folks to wear masks and not to sit by you unless they do. Hey, sorry I'm late. I'm getting ready for my remote class at the school, so I'll be listening. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's some guests on board, but I did have a quick question about the mask mandate, if we have time. Uh, sure. We got about, uh, okay. starting about two minutes, so go ahead with the question. Okay. Um, I've been trying to follow the local news, but we've got so many levels going on. I know I'm missing things. I saw that there was, you know, the ordinance is that if it, if our testing rate goes below 5%, the mask ordinance will be repealed. Is that still in play? Kind of. Um, okay. So Is first that off, it's only that's only the city ordinance. Uh, and right now there's a county ordinance that overlaps the city. Uh, so we have, um, if it's under 5% for two full weeks, and it stays under five, which means it's trending down, and the hospitalizations go into the green zone, then, um, you know, then uh, the mask ordinance automatically sunsets automatically uh, repeals um, so that's that's the trigger we put in the bill uh, or in a ordinance but it like I said what we do and what the county does is slightly different um, so there still might be the order in place even if the ordinance sunsets uh, and really we're, we're all kind of following dr. men's on this right we're all following them at it so even if our sunset and then the doctor comes out and says well we're seeing this and we recommend that, then we'll probably do what we can to match what, what the doctors say. But, but yeah, it's not as soon as it hits, it's gone. It, it has to stay that way for about two weeks. All right. Cause yeah, that is, that actually has affected our businesses this week. Mm -hmm. um, we had some, uh, somebody wanted to come through the cotillion, do a highly um, socially distanced show masked, but 
we decided um, not to risk it. You know, it was going to be the end of October, and that just the uh, thought that the mask ordinance would be repealed by then, um, we didn't do it. We decided it was too risky. Just, just so you know how that concept has flown, at least with our business. So could you could you guys do a because over at the uh, I know you have that big area over mm -hmm. in parks department they're going to do like uh, a symphony in a park mm -hmm. yeah, no, sure. yeah. We're, and, I mean could you guys do that type of stuff or if you had masks you'd be able to um so okay so we're supposed to actually be running NASCAR park all the you know the booze sales um mm -hmm. that and that's with wave so that's a different thing than the cotillion we talked about that we've been talking with Katie in the parks department it would actually cost us dramatically more to reopen for those things right now because we've restructured our liability insurance. And so if we sell booze like that at Wave, we have to make a lot more money than would be, you know, okay. theoretical in those instances. So that we would end up losing money if we took those opportunities. And just, uh, and I know we need to get started because we have guests on, but just, uh, is your, so with the problem with the mask ordinance or the, the concern you guys have, uh, it isn't if the mat if you have a big show and mask ordinance is in place you really can't enforce the mask ordinance right is that more the well no i mean we just want to have that as a like a fallback mm -hmm. uh you know and we're highly concerned that so if the mask ordinance does is repealed you know it's not like just because the testing rates are lower it's not going to exponentially grow as soon as the masks are taken off uh, right. So, you know, let's say we have a show scheduled two months out, mask ordinance is lifted a month out, we're going to spend a significant money on advertising and then, and probably still have to pay the band that comes through also. And just, so unless we can really count on safety measures being in place for the foreseeable future, it's just too risky for us. Okay. Yeah. We, uh, we, all, all the experts on this that I've talked to on my extracurricular classes on this. Um, and, and I think even in the media, it's mostly rather there's an ordinance or not, most people are recommending masks until until we at least get the vulnerable population vaccinated, right? So, um, so yeah, I mean, uh, the ordinance being in, like, you will probably have masks kicking around, at least people who, and now that people are used to them and know what they do, like, it, hopefully they'll, people will still be doing, if there's any threat of the virus, people will still be utilizing it regardless of, uh, to keep the numbers down regardless of the numbers so we'll see uh we're in this for i'll be at least a few more months so we got to get through it uh, and to help us get through it uh, i mean i think one of the best ways we do it is with more information and that's one of the reasons why um not only do we have this group together but also we we have some special guests that we're going to get to uh so we're about eight minutes in usually we do about we start about five minutes after uh, so let's go ahead and approve the minutes. Uh, did everybody, everybody get a chance to review the minutes from the last meeting? Uh, if so, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? A second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor of approving minutes, say aye. 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 You got your mute on, do one of these or a thumbs up. Uh, all opposed, go ahead and give us the emperor's thumb. Very good, the minutes pass. We're going to get right into our uh, guest. We, ha we have um, Kansas uh, Department of Commerce on uh, the Deputy Secretary Bill Murphy uh, for a brief overview <laughs> on what's happened at the state level uh, during the pandemic and then uh, open up for questions and I, I guess uh, discussion. Uh, and then we're are going to get to um, uh, the county manager, uh, Mr. Uh, Schultz after, after that. So Bill, you're at the floor and we thank you for being here. Great. Well, thank you, Mayor. As uh, you and I talked briefly before we uh, started things, uh, this uh, is week number seven for me. So um, I'm going to do my best to give you an update, but I've got some backup here with me. Uh, some of you may know Susan uh, Newpote Cattere. Uh, she headed up our business development team here for many years and uh, will be retiring at the end of the year but she's got the institutional knowledge that I don't yet have. So I've got her with me off screen here to make sure I, uh, if I get some questions that I'm not sure of, she can help me uh, help me with some answers. But uh, again, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, as I mentioned, I've been on the job now seven weeks. Um, I've now been to Wichita twice in those seven weeks. Um, had opportunity to visit with uh, uh, Andrew Nave. I've known Andrew for 
number of years when I was in um, uh, Tulsa, we talked a lot about our economic development models and um, kind of the regional approach to economic development. Um, I think I've reached out to a number of uh, the folks on the call today uh, via LinkedIn, just to make sure that uh, I stay connected to the work that uh, you all are doing in Wichita. Um, I, I see Wayne uh, up here. I did see Wayne. I don't know where he went, yes. but uh, I know he does a great job leading. Uh, I, I feel like I need the Brady Bunch matrix to really figure out who's all on the who's all on the call. But uh, I know Wayne does a great job leading our uh, small business administration work here in Kansas. Um, I see Adam Hartke's name, but that doesn't look like Adam. No, I'm Jesse. We work. Um, we both own music venues here in town. Yep, absolutely. And uh, I know uh, Adam was on the uh, call with uh, Secretary Toland. Yes. I think it was just yesterday about the work that um, uh, Adam is doing with the National Independent Venue Association. Um, I didn't know a lot about that organization until I um, did a little bit of research and saw some some music venues that um, I've uh, been to over my years in uh, Ohio and in Tulsa. So it was great to see places like the Victoria Theater and Music Hall in in, uh, in Cincinnati, and then of course Kane's Ball uh, Kane's Ballroom in in Tulsa. So um, look forward to experiencing uh, the music scene in Wichita here as things come back to normal at some point here. Um, but uh, yeah, as Mayor said, my name is Bill Murphy, and I'm I'm the new Deputy Secretary here at the Department of Commerce. Um, moved to Kansas from Tulsa. Uh, in Tulsa, I headed up the Regional Economic Development Program. Uh, before that, I was in Georgia. Uh, working for the Greater Columbus, Georgia Chamber of Commerce. Um, you might ask what the connection is there. Uh, both have a pretty significant aerospace component. Uh, in Columbus, Georgia, we had a Pratt Whitney maintenance repair and overhaul facility. Uh, and then of course, uh, Tulsa uh, with the uh, Spirit, uh, Nordam, and of course their American Airlines uh, facility, uh, their um, big, big aerospace player. So it was significant connection to the work happening there in Wichita. Uh, as I mentioned, been on the job for about seven weeks, um, getting to know the community. Uh, uh, Andrew and his team at the partnership gave me a nice overview of some of the projects that are, that are happening in the community. Uh, I've got a chance to tour some of those. It was really very impressive. Um, I had a follow-up meeting with Conco Construction. Uh, I guess that was just last week uh, where uh, they shared some of the work that they were doing in Wichita and really what they're doing across the state. So um, I'm starting to feel a little bit more comfortable. I, um, I purchased a house in Kansas. Uh, now I only have to wait two months to get my driver's license because uh, um, yeah, I guess that's how far out it is to get a driver's license. So, um, but anyway, uh, I, I just wanted to reiterate that, you know, as the state's largest city, uh, you know, we obviously understand the importance that Wichita and the Wichita region play uh, here in the state of Kansas. Um, you know, in addition to the work that we do promoting Kansas and the aerospace assets through our business recruitment team, we've also got a dedicated person uh, that uh, focuses exclusively on Sedgwick County. Uh, I think some of you may know uh, Wiley. He's our business, in-state business development person there. So he's working day in and day out uh, with local companies to help them understand the resources available at the state. Uh, to help uh, existing businesses grow and expand here in our state. Um, but we also have another individual uh, uh, there in Sedgwick County. Um, he heads up our aviation aerospace assets, obviously because that's such a big driver of our state's economy. Chuck Alderson, uh, some of you may know, is uh, housed at uh, Wichita State. And um, you know he's working day in and day out to make sure that that industry uh, uh, is uh, connected with the resources they need to, again, stay and grow, especially during these very difficult uh, uh, times for the aviation industry. Um, I'll very quickly cover, uh, I think, probably what you're interested in knowing about some of the, uh, uh, looking back at your minutes from last uh, month, uh, the uh, SPARC grants. Um, as, as many of you may know, uh, we recently closed uh, our latest uh, CARES Act uh, monies coming to uh, the state, our SPARC grants. Um, we had, 
1,042 small business working capital applications from Sedgwick County alone. So that's uh, very significant. Uh, that represented about 18% of the total applications that we got. Um, and that's probably not surprising as um, you may know, uh, uh, the Sedgwick County area accounts for about 20% of the state's population. So it makes sense that we would see uh, about 20% of the applications coming from, from the community. Um, we're in the process of notifying uh, the, uh, uh, those who are, are awarded uh, monies through this program. Uh, that began this week and will wrap up uh, next week. Um, so um, yeah, stay tuned. I, I know we'll get that full list out as uh, all of the applicants, both those who received funding and those who did not receive funding uh, here over the next uh, week or uh, week, basically. Um, and again, as you uh, may or may not know, this, uh, these, these SPARC dollars were allocated to really reflect the uh, population of Kansas. So we've got 40% uh, geared to the KC Metro area. Uh, we have 20% uh, dedicated to Sedgwick County and then 40% for the rest of Kansas. So um, as you see these announcements coming out, you'll see that reflected in the dollars that are, uh, that are gonna be uh, uh, awarded as part of this uh, program. Um, we also had um, 708 awards for the uh, PPE procurement uh, grant component of those SPARC uh, dollars. Um, and um, we had three universities um, so under one of the programs, uh, Kansas public universities were eligible to apply for uh, grant awards up to a maximum of $600,000 to help build research diagnostic uh, capacity related to the SARS uh, COVID um, by investing in new facilities or uh, upgrades to those facilities. So um, I believe Wichita State uh, is one of the awardees that will be uh, will be getting notified here as part of that process. So um, happy to answer any questions, uh, Mr. Mayor, that uh, you or any any of the folks on the call may have. And if I don't have an answer, I promise to get you an answer uh, after I do a bit of a little investigating. All right, let's open up some questions, Amber. Um, so how are you um, notifying people? How are you notifying companies that they've? Yeah, uh, so on? we uh, we are reaching out via email and phone uh, to uh, notify those companies. So uh, companies who have received uh, will need to fill out a basically a funding agreement. So there will be some follow up paperwork, uh, but um, uh, folks who did get money will be receiving a phone call. Uh, I believe we will be emailing those who did not, uh, just because we've got, um, as I said, uh, quite a few folks to get in contact, both not only in Sedgwick County, but really across the state with our with our staff, so. Other questions? Yes, Jacob. Is there a way that if we do get denied to be able to appeal it? Um, the situation we ran into with my businesses is they didn't, ex they were they didn't exist in 2019 and so they have a guideline that if they, you didn't exist before july 2019 you were automatically denied uh for it um i i've actually talked to somebody within the department of commerce and also representative dan hawkins as well about it um just to try to figure it out because we were an asset purchase so we purchased an existing company but set up different EIN numbers. So we considered to be looked like a new business because we had different new entities that were established. Yeah. So um, as, as you all know, um, these funds were made available for a very short period of time. And um, we made some decisions to um, help um, get these funds out as quickly as possible, given that there were no kind of criteria or guidelines or application processes uh, up until the time that we knew that we were getting these funding. So um, we had to make some decisions on how those funds would be allocated given that um, when we had that short time frame. And regrettably, that was one of those decisions that we felt uh, was um, kind of in the best interest of assuring that these 
uh, tax dollars, albeit federal tax dollars, were um, allocated um, and, used. and used. Yeah, allocated and used. Thank you, Susan. Uh, uh, as quickly as possible. And so, um, again, we had to make some 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 tough choices about what those parameters were going to be. And um, un unfortunately, that was one that um, we felt was important enough, recognizing that there were going to be those instances um, that you know for, you know, um, that, that we could not have foreseen, but regrettably, those are the, those are the guidelines that we've got in place to uh, administer and, and get those dollars out the door quickly. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I regret that uh, you weren't able to participate through that, to that particular grant program. Now, there may be other, um, there, you know, we are um, hopeful, I guess is probably the best word that there'll be another funding round here. Um, but uh, we don't yet know what that looks like. Um, and uh, so we'll certainly uh, uh, certainly keep you posted uh, about what other programs uh, we may be deploying as additional revenues get, get deployed uh, for, the, uh, for this uh, situation. Well, and I haven't been denied like directly yet. I'm just in, I'm in conversations with a few people to see if there's a way to get my us through in a different way. I mean, you're talking to a bunch of entrepreneurs that uh, hustles is something we're not uh, scared of. And yeah. um, that's one thing that we're working through. It's just because ours is unique is because we have 25 employees between both our businesses that um, that would remain employed through this. And so, um, but yeah, I understand where you guys had to come from on that. It's, you know, it's just, I've had to work through a process of explaining our situation, which I will say, I you the Department of Commerce has been very receptive and very communicating openly with me, which has been great to say the least. It's been amazing the communication we, I've had. Well, I'll, I'll be sure to pass that along because I know, um, you know, we've, we've asked a lot of our staff to uh, kind of pivot <laughs> in their normal work duties. And um, we found out some folks have some, some tremendous um, uh, technical resources that, you know, would not have otherwise been known to us. And so we'll, um, I'll be sure to pass that along because I know we've had a lot of folks who've been working really hard to try to, again, get these programs stood up with very little guidance and really under some pretty tight timeframes. So thank you for that. I'll second that actually. Also, we are working on three levels of lobbying right now at federal, state and county and the state has been amazing. Um, so thank you for everyone at the state level. It's just been the easiest to work with. That, that's again, that's great to hear. You know, I'm, I'm the new guy here. So um, I, I love to hear that. It just reinforces, um, you know, my decision to come work for this team because I like, I'm hearing from you all, a talented group of folks who are doing some pretty great things here for the state of Kansas. And uh, I hope to be able to contribute to that. Other questions for the deputy secretary? All right. Well, we have... oh, sorry. Go ahead. This uh, is Felicia. Did you give a date that you said when it would, when everybody would know if they received it or did not? Did I miss that part? Yeah, I I believe everyone will be have been notified by the end of next week. Okay. Thank you. And, and if you if you have made application and you don't, um, I'll be sure to uh, email uh, uh, the mayor with my contact information. It's pretty easy, but I'll go ahead and um, I'll email it to him. It's bill.murphy at ks.gov. But um, if you don't hear something, uh, I'll be sure to send my contact information to the mayor. And what was the percentage that you said of people in Sedgwick County that will get it, businesses? Uh, did you give a percentage or did you give a number? number? We had 1,042 applications from Sedgwick County. And that represented about 18% of the total applications that were received for the state. So, um, um, do you have the, do you have the number of the how many people from that group received it? Uh, I don't have that number yet. As I said, we're still in the process of notifying people. Um, okay. I would anticipate um, some percentage of that, uh, maybe 25% or so, will be will be the number, again, that's just off the top of my head, thinking about all the applications we receive, but uh, we'll, we'll have a, a more clear picture uh, here at the end of the day after we've been able to notify um, individuals who, were, who we've given uh, approval for. 
Thank you. Other questions for the deputy secretary? Um, hi, Bill. This is Wayne, Wayne Bell with the SBA. And uh, good to uh, good to hear from you this morning. Uh, so just to clarify, uh, at the moment, you are no longer accepting SPARC applications and you guys are working through what you have. Is that the status? Or can businesses continue to submit applications? Uh, the, the applications have, have been closed, so uh, we are no longer accepting uh, applications for this, uh, this round of funding. Understood. Thank you. Further questions for the um, Deputy Secretary? And Bill, if we get any questions um, after this call, uh, we'll, we'll obviously reach out to your office. We, we appreciate uh, not only yourself, but also the uh, openness that the uh, Secretary of Labor, I mean, Secretary of Commerce uh, office has been to, to Wichita, uh, to us during this time and even before the coronavirus, during the uh, economic downturn um, with, uh, with our aerospace in industry. So we, we really appreciate you. Uh, and, and please let uh, Secretary Tolan uh, know as well how much we appreciate uh, his willingness to always get on the phone and be working with us. I did have one quick question. Sorry, I was on mute. When I was trying to ask it. Um, it. Will the notifications for the PPE funding be separate? Because um, we received a notification regarding um, our Sparks application, but we didn't get anything about the PPE. Yes, there will be there will be a, a separate notification going out for the PPE. Uh, grant awards. Okay, and have there been notifications that have gone out for that, or are are you waiting? They have not yet gone out. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Further questions. And again, if we, if something changes and, and by this time, by next meeting, we we might try to get Bill back on the phone if there's any. Uh, large changes between now and then, um, you know, the goal is to get as much information out as possible. So if there's no further questions at this time, then I don't see anyone rushing to unmute. Bill, thank you so much. Thanks again, Mayor. Thanks everybody. Appreciate it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and um, turn the, our attention over to uh, County Manager Tom Stoltz. Uh, he is the manager of the Cedric County uh, Center County, which is the other local government, they're the ones in control of, or the ones that, that yeah, are in control of the um, CARES Act money. Uh, as many of you know on this call, uh, CARES Act was distributed based on population. Wichita, unlike some other cities, uh, we didn't get the money, our county got the money. Uh, so they're kind of in the driver's seat. They're also the service the border health. So when it comes to uh, with the exception of Mass, uh, they're in the driver's seat uh, really throughout this pandemic. Uh, I kind of uh, say we're, we're in the passenger seat, right? Like we're uh, at the city level, we're here to help. Um, and and we're, we're all working together uh, towards driving in the same direction, I guess, if I use the same metaphor. So uh, Tom's gracious enough to be on the call with us uh, so uh, he can possibly give us an update on CARES Act funding, what's happening at the county level, and then take questions. So Tom, the floor is yours. You're muted, Tom. Got it. There you go. Um, good morning, Mayor, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak today. And I've talked with uh, many of you on this uh, call in other venues before, so uh, good to see a lot of you again. Um, let me just quickly give a uh, just a quick history of uh, the CARES funding, and um, and I appreciate the mayor's comments about driver's seat and passenger seats, and we'd love to give away the driver's seat if anybody would like to take it, but it's, it's as the health department component of the county, um, that's kind of what we inherited. So we've, and I appreciate the gentleman from the state saying that we've had to pivot a lot of staff. We, we've been pivoting since March, um, still trying to run a county, but also pivoting toward uh, COVID management and CARES management and mask mandates and gathering mandates and all the things that uh, all the balls were all juggling right now. So when, when CARES was announced uh, or this funding pot was announced back in the third week of April, uh, 
and, and just to, just to, and I'll say this a couple of times, the speed at which things move and change uh, has been very challenging. And in government where you're trained to be very careful with people's tax dollars and you uh, have to be accountable and responsible for every penny that you bring in and goes out, the, the, we're just not used to this kind of quick movement on dollars and allocations and, and really neither is the federal government. We've been struggling uh, with this uh, ever since. So when the money was uh, allocated in the in the third week was even mentioned, we had it like within eight days, it, which they announced it was going to happen. And we literally had the money in the bank account uh, about eight days later. It was just amazing how fast it happened. So and I'll and I'll mention coming into this, I'm I'm getting there, but I'm not a CARES expert, but I have seven people on my financial team. I have two attorneys. I have two consultants and one audit firm that are experts in this. And so we knew early on going in that the county has never been a grantor before. We are a grantee a lot. We get money on behalf of the state. We spend money on behalf of the state, but we have not been in the role of grantor. Uh, even some cities, Wichita, for example, occasionally is a grantor with CDBG funds and other kinds of components. County doesn't have a CDBG funds, so we've never been in the business of being a grantor. So we knew going in, um, even before we got the money, that a couple of things had happened. We had to have a consultant. We had to have a national consultant. Uh, we had to have an oversight group because when you're getting this kind of money, uh, I wanted citizens that were um, gonna sit on a board and keep an eye on this money. Um, and, we, and we knew we were going to need uh, audit uh, uh, capacity to from outside of this organization. So that's what BKD serves for us. So um, we hired them even before we got the money uh, and they have been uh, 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 guiding us uh, ever since. So the money when it was initially uh, allocated was targeted to help local governments, public health, uh, and the local governments include all the municipalities and schools uh, within, the, within, the, within the government and any townships for that matter too. Uh, public health, social services. Uh, that's what this money was targeted for. Um, that we were told at that time there was going to be other dollars flowing for businesses. Uh, there is, and we have allocated some of the money in this CARES funny, uh, money uh, funding for businesses. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So we hired Widow Bryan. Widow Bryan is a national consulting company on just federal grants in general, and they are CARES experts. The state of Kansas has hired them. Johnson County, who is the only other county in, this, in the state of Kansas who has received direct allocation of CARES, has hired them. We hired them first. Johnson County hired them based on how they were serving us. And the state of Kansas, uh, about a month ago, brought them on board too. So we have consistency within the state of consultants, um, uh, what's going on. We, uh, BKD, which is a national auditing uh, group, but it's, we also have a local uh, auditing here in Wichita. Uh, they are the external auditor for Sedgwick County. We further contracted with them to help manage this and oversight this so that we, at the end of the day, were honest with this money and forthright and ethical. Um, so Widow O'Brien's our consultant. BKD is an auditor. We have da disaster recovery services uh, on contract. They help us manage FEMA dollars there as a consultant. And then, of course, as I mentioned, we have a citizen oversight group. Uh, from the get-go, um, Federal Treasury who put this, this money out and within Federal Treasury is not who I'm scared of. I'm scared of the Office of the Inspector General. That's the component of Federal Treasury who audits and holds us accountable for these dollars. Since this money went out April 22nd, we have had 11 changes from the federal government, from the Office of Inspector General on the rules of how this money could be spent and the audit component that was gonna go with it. So it's not been a stagnant, stable ship uh, we, and every time they put rules changes out, we have to read and react. Um, in early July, the Board of County Commission uh, looked at this and they laid out buckets of money to, uh, to spend with these CARES dollars and it's all on our website, but very quickly it was uh, county regional COVID response dollars. Uh, that's everything from information technology and health needs and our courts uh, are really struggling, as I'm sure all courts across the land are, but our district court struggling on how to keep the process moving. So there was a certain amount of dollars uh, dedicated to that. 
uh, about 10 million to local governments, Wichita City, Derby, uh, Park City. We've had 17 uh, cities within Cedric County apply for those CARES dollars and those monies are, are going out the door uh, as we speak. Um, the school district uh, applied for many millions. Uh, the commission ended up uh, authorizing, um, let me see here, I think they authorized three and a half million or so for schools. Uh, healthcare providers, uh, senior living, skilled nursing, public health care initiatives, got a pot, social services, vulnerable, that service vulnerable populations, mental health, uh, those types of components, which is in the wheelhouse of the county, uh, got certain amount of funding. Um, and then we left intentionally based on what our consultant recommended, a list of some undesignated dollars. And to date, that is about 12 million. That is uh, still uh, undesignated, but things pop up and hit us in the face uh, every day. Uh, for example, last week, we just authorized a million dollars on some IT uh, uh, infrastructure work for the courts so they can begin to run trials safely. So it's, it's like something every week that pops up that's, that's different. Now on the side of this, uh, the state of Kansas came in and allocated 9.3 million specific for economic revitalization and the commission uh, authorized uh, that to be broken down through safe operating small business grant program which is about five million uh, ppe kits for businesses which uh, interest bank arena is morphing right now they're not an entertainment venue anymore they are a ppe handout zone uh, and there are pallets of equipment and ppes being stored in interest bank arena right now uh, with everything COVID, we have to wait on things. There's never, there's always slowness in getting supplies and uh, um, equipment in. We were hoping we'd be handing that out like now, like the second or third week of September. That's going to be a two week delay because we're waiting on items to come in. And that's going to be just, we're going to make that into packets of PPE for businesses just come in and carry it out. Uh, so that they can get uh, PPEs into their businesses because a, a key part of this money was getting businesses back open in today's um, environment where we are having to live with the virus. The virus is still here, so we have to figure out how to live with it and how to function as a, a e economically. Uh, and then about a million three for workforce development, which we're still chewing on. We've had three applications for that. Um, and in any one of these buckets, the commission has the authority to throw more or less money and they have some fluidity within these buckets to, 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 to move money. So uh, with that, I wanna just, I wanna talk, and then there's a lot of other resources for business on our website. Wayne's on from SBA, uh, Department of Commerce is on. Uh, there's other um, resources out there for businesses and we're all hoping uh, and if you're watching what's being argued about in DC now is another stimulus bill, which will be targeted to recovery of businesses. Um, if you're watching national news, and, we, and I watch whenever I have any time, the, there's a fear, and I know most of you, many of you are small business owners, there is a fear in this country that if we lose our small businesses, that our economy uh, will, will potentially never recover. So it's important, we all understand it's important to do whatever we can to support our small businesses uh, to get money into their hands, to get a business operation into their hands to where we can begin to open. And I fully understand many of you are in the entertainment uh, world. That has been socked harder than maybe anyone else. And I always say anything that's fun is now you can't do it in COVID because it just, uh, you can't gather people and we're such a societal animal. I mean, we just love to be around other people. We love to to party, we love to talk, and, and now all of a sudden we can't do that as a society. And it's just we, everybody's struggling with that. And I know your businesses uh, specifically are. Um, and and let me just finish up by saying nobody's happy with what the county has done with allocation of these dollars. Uh, the schools are unhappy they didn't get enough money. Um, social services not happy that they didn't get enough money. Uh, I think other the cities are realizing their expenses. Uh, with COVID as this on goes, continues to escalate and they're, they're seeking more money. Um, and so when we got 99 million and it sounded like so much money, 
even in April, I'm thinking that, that sounds like a lot of money, but I know how hard this community has been hit and businesses top to bottom, um, uh, you know, businesses like um, the, the Village Charter, uh, the airlines, any hotel, motel, any restaurant, all of your businesses, all of the entertainment. I knew how hard this, this community had been hit. And I knew 99 million one gonna be enough. And honestly, we could probably spend twice that. So the commission now is in this uh, precarious uh, situation of trying to allocate these dollars fairly. Uh, we're in a precarious situation of trying to manage it with 11 rules changes uh, that have happened. Um, and we've all, and we've got this crazy time deadline of 1230 when CARES money has to be spent by. We've talked with all of our federal uh, uh, group, uh, Estes and Moran and uh, everybody to try to get that deadline extended because it puts so much pressure on us to move this so quickly. Um, but, and, and they keep saying it's gonna get moved, but it hasn't yet. So 1230 is the deadline. So we're trying to work under, under that time deadline. So let me, let me get back to the safe operating grants, which um, the, the, the concept there was, uh, and, and let me just tell you the status of where that's at. We put it out there, we opened it, we closed it. We got about 400 applications that were going through. These are five of the $5,000 mini grants to just get equipment and things into your hands so that you could reopen safely. Uh, and it tried to, we tried to dovetail it with the city of Wichita authorizing this ability to do to expand your operations out into the street. So if you needed equipment or dollars to make that happen and take advantage of that, we were trying to trying to shove this in. So we have 400 applications in the commission. We're here. I think we'll have uh, be ready for the commission to hear these applications next Wednesday for just a massive authority to cut the checks and get this out. Um, some people say, well, why, why less than 50? Well, we were targeting small businesses because we knew they were hurt the most uh, and maybe didn't have the kind of capital outlay behind the scenes to sustain. So we tried to target them first. Um, we had 5 million designated for this. So if you figure 400 applications, we're looking at maybe two, two and a half million of, of output there. So we'll have some monies left over there and the commission will decide Wednesday how to regroup and go on that. And, and there's a couple of things we can do we can um, open the aperture of that and, and maybe take away the, any business can apply for it. Um, and, and, and maybe uh, throw more money into it too. Of the 10 million undesignated setting in CARES, we can throw uh, more money into that component if that's what the commission decides to do. Um, people say, well, why only 5,000? Uh, yeah, that's a drop in the bucket. Well, if you, with federal money, and, and, I've, and I've, even in the police department, I worked with federal grants for years. It is never free money. There is always strings attached. There's always audit. There's always accountability. There's a million forms to fill out. It's never easy. And this is no exception. So the $5,000 WIT has said is a good baseline because we don't then have to get into all of your records. We don't have to have you fax us and send us all of the integral details of how you run business and account for money and buy and spend things. With that small of amount, we thought that they, we could get away and just hand out money and not really have a lot of check and balance or minimal amount of check and balance in a federal system. So that was where the 5,000 came from. We didn't draw it out of a hat. Uh, we were consulted to do that as a way to move this money quickly and get it out there with the least amount of burden on businesses. Because um, a, a piece of this is, to get money, if we're going to just, if you're going to have to spend a hundred hours of administration and staff time trying to figure out how to account for it, it's not worth it to you anymore. So we're trying to keep this as simple as we can to get it out as quickly as possible with the least amount of red tape attached to it. So um, that's kind of where we're at today. Uh, we'll, the commission will, uh, and if you're not watching commission meetings, um, and, and sometimes they get long and, and dry, but for the on the Wednesday, every Wednesday, we talk about CARES funding, and it's important uh, if you if you watch it on, uh, you know, look at the replay of it or it can dial in just to watch that piece of it. Um, th there's important decisions and discussions about CARES funding during that time. So I'll I'll stop there, Mayor, and uh, would be glad to answer uh, questions as best I can. If I don't know the answers, I'll get them to Janet. She can farm it out to the rest of you. But that's kind of where we're at today. Hey, Tom, I have a quick question for you. Um, I've been following the changes um, that have been put on this. What specifically have you seen that I'm not seeing that um, speaks directly to the 
business interruption grant portion because I haven't seen that change much. What do you mean on a national level or just at a local level here? Well, I mean, you, you, you said that there have been new um, restrictions put out by the Office of the Inspector General that are affecting the business interruption grant specifically. Um, no. Well, I didn't mean to say business interruption grant specifically, just the whole genre of the CARES allocation right. and funding. Uh, it's more of a global change. I don't know that there's anything specific toward uh, this component of it. Right. So that, that's what I've seen. It's still permissible and allowable. Um, it is. You know, a couple other things. Uh, I think you're seeing the, the, the focus shift to the county and the state right now because of the fail, failure of the federal government to act. Um, so I think that's why you're probably feeling the pressure a little more, um, and knowing that there's $10 million sitting there for small businesses, potentially, um, I, I can't speak for everybody on the call, but I can speak for us and we keep tight books. So being audited, isn't a big deal. Like we can make our books open. Yeah. If, I can get means... you our accounting stuff within like 15 minutes. Yeah. Essentially so if it means me staying in business. Like we're happy to do that. Uh, you know, we're, um, not scared by that in one little bit. So we, we keep tight books. We can we can provide financial records. If somebody can't, then you know that's that's on them. But I think most people on this call probably could. Yeah, so, I mean if it if it means that we're gonna be able to keep our houses, I think we'd all gladly share our books because yeah. that's where we're at. Yeah, and and five thousand dollars it, it's just yeah, we'd rather open our books up than get five thousand bucks, honestly. Because yeah. it's not gonna help. All right, yeah. But I know you guys are up against a lot. It's a lifeboat situation. Everybody's trying to jump in. But, um, you know, I, I think it's imperative that, you know, with the lack of action at the federal level that we start taking care of our own with what we can locally. And I think that this is a good start. I hear you. Thank you. Other questions for the manager? I'll just speak up because nobody else is. Uh, I, I'm i just curious to know, like, first of all, maybe you all can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't like to ask questions about knowing the answer first, but uh, did the CARES funding act, like when we talked with the Secretary of Commerce, the funding that he's talking about, do they ultimately originate from the same place from the federal government? I just want to ask that before I ask my real question. Well, I'll answer that as best I can. So the CARES funding that went out uh, when the state got there, oh, they got a little over a billion. Uh, that is the same money that went to Johnson and Sedgwick County too, but it's separate and apart for that. So the Sedgwick County got a little bit more than 99 million. Um, the, uh, Johnson County got 1.2 or 120 million uh, okay. and, and the state got a little over a billion. So the 9 million that the county received from the state is part of that billion. So yeah, it was all it was all cares all announced and delivered pretty much at the same time. Okay, so my real question then is, why was the application for the five thousand dollar grant so much harder than the state's application for the twenty thousand dollar grant? That took like three minutes, and it took me an hour's time. It yeah. was just, I, I, I just it's, it's frustrating for me, but I did it, and I know Adam and and uh, Jess probably. It was no big deal for us to get it done, but for so many other entrepreneurs in our community, there is that is a big wall for them because uh, they're uncertainty in the time. And I just feel like we've made it harder for like, as you put it, the thing that we really don't have to worry about doing the paperwork on. Yeah. We had to go pay ten dollars to go get a certificate from the state on that one, you know, of good standing. That that little thing is just like one thing that someone might not do, and it might be the difference for them. So I just want to put that out there. It's no, and I hear that. Matter of fact, I was reading your minutes. Janet had sent me the minutes uh, from your group uh, last month, and that was one of the complaints. So I actually pulled the uh, the application offline, and it's a three pager. My question to the finance team was, why, why, for five thousand bucks, why do we need three pages of, of application? And again, this all comes from the consultant that we didn't write this because actually there's a misspelled word in there. We try to, not to misspell when we put things out, but the, actually the consultant came up with that form and shot it to us. And we rolled out based on their uh, based on their um, consulting. So um, I, you know, and I don't know what, how the state simplified theirs because we're using the same uh, auditor, but uh, or the same consultant. So I'll I'll further dive into that. And as we roll another round of this, we'll we'll try to make that as simple as we possibly can. So um, right here. So I know that. Um, 
you know, you talk a lot about the small business ones. What about the social service grants? And when do you know when they're going to be making decisions on those? Oh, yeah, I should know all this. Hold on just a minute. Let me get a timeline. And actually, it's all try to put all this on. It's really hard to get this nicely packaged on a website where people can just read it. So um, social services uh, application deadline, September 20. Initial review will be 924. Stimulus review team will uh, review it from 924 to 101. BOCC vote to award will be 107. And agreement to sub sub recipient for signature 108 be the day after. And then uh, we want that money out the door uh, no sooner than 1130. Right. And all of it has to be spent by the end of the year. All of CARES money? That, yeah, that's the, that's, that's, right. that's so, one of the rules so of the game. A month to spend or, you know, two months to spend. No, we, we, have, a, we have to get it out our door to you by okay. the end of the year. How you're spending it, I don't believe, has to be done. We have to get our money out the door to sub-recipients by 1230. Okay, because it was confusing. It was like, well, you have till the end of the year for us to be able to spend all of the money that you guys awarded us. I think you have to, that's part of the trick in the application process is, is to make sure that it's needs here and now. And I'm not sure why the federal government laid it out that way because come on folks, we all know that this isn't going anywhere on 1230. We all know that there are gonna be challenges for this community. We, we know that when mandatory, uh, you, you, we, when people can become evicted from their homes, when that order seizes, we're gonna have homeless issues. So we'd like to stick away some money for the future to to deal with these things and we can't under the rules now so um we're trying to get it out by 12 30 how you guys spend it um and that's part of the trick and i think that's part of the struggles for businesses and social services and public health and schools to show that the need is here and now because it's just natural for us to think well this is the here and now but we also know that in february march april we're going to have this issue well, that's that's not what this money's for, the way it's written out. It has to be for here and now. So, but the 1230 deadline is the stress on us to get the money out to you. Hey, Tom, or maybe Mayor Whipple. Um, so in Illinois, um, they were facing the same thing, specifically with social services. Um, and then they realized that they had received a lot of money from FEMA. Um, well, they realized they needed to apply and then in turn received a lot of money from FEMA for social services, things like renting out hotels for homelessness and, and others. Um, and that way, um, they actually freed up a bunch of the CARES money for small businesses within Illinois and, and Chicago specifically. Um, have we gotten FEMA money? Yeah. And have you looked into making more of that uh, accessible to social services? Yeah, we've, you know, Adam, we're running down a highway here with, 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 three lanes of traffic right now. There's CARES money local, there's FEMA money national, and then there's SPARC money now state national. And we're trying to juggle because what you can't do is a provider can't get funding for the same thing from all three entities. So we have to keep them separate and distinct. We are vigorously uh, involved with FEMA trying to get every dime we can for Kansas people out of FEMA. And that's across the state, not just in Cedric County. Uh, and in fact, that's one of our consultants is helping us with getting as much FEMA dollars as we can. Uh, and then that's why we hope then with uh, that, we, as we move these buckets, if we can get some FEMA monies to shore up, the commission has a, has the ability of the authority and the means to then move these buckets of money around to get to where we need to get to. And, I, and I'll just tell you right now, there's a, and I talk to commissioners uh, every day, there is, everybody knows that small businesses right now, businesses in general in, in Wichita, are struggling and I think there's a uh, I think you'll see some movement on a will to get more money into the business hands through grants um, but the, uh, uh, social service is important as well I, we, we've got a huge ask in from hospital systems um, you know on things that they need and boy in a time like this in a time of pandemic with so many sick people it's hard just to turn a blind eye to that but there's so many needs that we're just trying to prioritize this but to answer your question, we're after checking seat cushions right now. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, we understand. I figured you were. I just know it worked well. They actually got more money for social services, yeah. and then we're able to free up more money for businesses. So yeah. it, it actually 
really worked well and I wanted to make sure that we were following that same trail because you know, it could help Amber and others that need the social, social services money to, to tack that into FEMA and, and free up more, more allocations. Yeah. Okay. And then help us as small businesses as well, because then there would be more money freed up for business interruption grants. Okay. And I'll just be real quick to address that. Uh, Sally Stain is one of the best there is when it comes to um, housing. Uh, you know, she works in, she helps us with our, um, or she works here to help with our social service programs. Uh, she's found ways to adapt different programs so that they help more people and they become uh, more effective. Uh, she was on a call with us, I, I think where we met with the uh, some of the bar owners early on, I think last month, uh, where she's able to adapt some of these programs to help uh, folks who, uh, at least two programs who uh, might be out of work right now um, because, you know, the, because of the pandemic. So uh, just to put that into context, last year we spent about $2 million on homelessness. This year we're spending $5 million because of Sally's work. Uh, so there's a lot of, uh, there, there's a lot of creativity in, in utilizing uh, community partnerships and different funding streams uh, to address on the social service side what's happening here. Uh, but and, and I'll probably get her on, if not this call, on, on an interview that can be put out on social media sometime soon so folks know about that because she's just doing amazing work. Uh, and you know, hopefully, like you said, it will free up funds that are less restrictive to be used in other areas. Other questions for the manager? I've got, it's not necessarily a question, um, and you kind of touched on it when you were talking about the um, the monies that that are that will remain in those from that five thousand dollar grant pool. Um, as the commissioners are trying to figure out how to allocate that moving forward, any of that that's that's left or any of that ten million that's still sitting out there. Um, just please keep gig workers and people in the events industry who aren't venue owners or bar managers in mind because there's a lot of um, a lot of my vendors who are all contract workers who have not worked since March 13th, um, myself included. Virtual events are not paying the bills and um, doing doing little gigs online at chicken and pickle and things like that are great and and help put band-aids on things but we really need some um an influx of of money for those who are not receiving pua anymore who don't qualify for unemployment who don't qualify for a lot of those the the cares grants or sparks money or anything like that so if any of that could be made available and accessible very easily that would be fantastic I hear you, Shannon, and that's, um, I'm writing it down, but, you know, one of the things we looked at early on was how we could get money into that level to the, you know, giving business money and there's a, there's, there's opportunity there for business to apply, but the individual, when you get down to the granular level, the individual workers that spin us around here, this is, it's so hard to get money to them out of these kinds of funds. And so then you're down to the unemployment benefits and all that that whole uh, uh, group of funding. But I, you know, I'll talk with commissioners about it now. I'll talk with Witt about it uh, to try to do anything we can to, to, to do that type of funding. It's just very difficult with the rules that they put on us. So I appreciate the comment, so. Other questions for the manager before we get on towards the end here? All right, see none. Tom, I really appreciate you taking the time uh, thank you for being on with us. All right, Mayor. Hey, anybody can email me at any time, and if, and we'll we'll work on this as best we can, guys. Thank you for allowing me to talk. So, of course, we appreciate all the work you guys are doing. Thanks, Mayor. All right, we're gonna go on to Wayne Bell. I know we're bumping up against our time frame. We usually go about 15 minutes late, but uh, I don't know if there's any updates on Sparks or anything. It's gonna take a lot of time. But Wayne, what, what do you got for us? Uh, thank you, Mayor, and uh, really, really good to. Um, to hear from uh, both the county and the state. Um, in short, SBA, uh, we still have our debt relief uh, associated with our loan programs. So, so that, in, that includes actually a waiver of our, um, that includes actually a waiver of our principal and interest uh, on all SBA loans uh, for a period of six months. 
And uh, that debt relief goes away after September 27th of this month. So um, uh, if there are or any business owners on the line or, or any colleagues that you guys have, I'd recommend uh, that we get the information, you know, recommend we get the information uh, circulated so that, um, you know, so that everyone uh, who's able can take advantage of this um, uh, debt relief. Beyond that, uh, we're kind of in a holding pattern in terms of what's next uh, for uh, any other um, uh, stimulus uh, benefits that may be in negotiation or may ultimately, you know, result uh, from Congress. Uh, so we'll see uh, how that unfolds. Uh, but we do have at the moment, again, our economic injury disaster loans. Uh, those um, continue to be available and a number of businesses are, are working through that process. So I'll pause there. Uh, we're, we're still available to help. If anyone needs help offline, I'd love uh, to visit with you. Uh, so anyway, I'd invite any questions that you guys may have. Any questions, Mr. Bell? See none at this time. Thank you, sir, as always. All right. Thank you, Mayor. And I have to jump. I have one up. quick question. I'm always late. Um, <laughs> Wayne, what's your email address? I think I've got it somewhere, but I've got a couple questions okay. for you. So Okay. I'm going to put it in the chat, but it is okay, Wayne. Okay, perfect. It's wayne.bell at sba.gov, but I'm going to put it in the chat okay. right now. Pretty straightforward. Hey, Wayne, I got one quick question. Um, I, uh, I'm curious because a friend of mine who's on this call actually made a post yesterday about the complexities of the PPP uh, uh, forgiveness application. It prompted me, Sarah, to um, message my banker last night and he responded with they had not been given direction yet on for how to do the paperwork. So when I heard her going through that process, I'm like, should I be doing that right now? Because my banker has been on his game. So can you tell us where we're supposed to be with this? Because I'm trying to run a business and save this thing. I don't really want to be in the weeds, but I don't need to be. Can you help me with that? Yeah. So there are um, two different loan forgiveness uh, applications that you can find on our website. Um, you know, so these are the applications that once your period, your covered period is over, you're submitting uh, your, you know, your information to the lender. And then the lender is actually has access to a portal that they're using to submit the documents to the SBA. Um, that process, there's still some nuances. Uh, lenders have a number of questions. Uh, and so from our Office of Capital Access, and then our, our team members internally, we're all kind of getting uh, educated on those nuances. So we're, we're working with lenders as they're submitting those applications and <clears throat> we're having trainings that are, that are being done with the lending community. So um, I, would, I would just say this, Andrew, if you've, got, if, if you've got a lender that has questions or if you're ready to submit your uh, forgiveness uh, documents. Uh, just encourage the lender to uh, work with us, reach out to us. We've been in constant communication with the lending community, so they should be current um, with any new information. But keep in mind, as with all of this, it's been pretty fluid. So there have been subtle changes, and we're continuing to educate the lenders of those changes. Uh, so. You know, that's kind of where we are right now. Um, there are some applications that have been processed and uh, I would just recommend working with your bank. Your bank should be in constant communication with us. And we've got a quick question on that also. We're hearing that banks are lobbying for all of the PPP loans below 150,000 to be automatically forgiven. So our bank also has the portal up, but we are not able to submit. Um, and so I was just wondering if there's, you know, and how is that, it, how would that work? Does that have to go through with this theoretical bill that sometime if we ever get a functional federal government that they might pass? Is that something that like the Treasury Department is going to take hold of? How, like, what is the likelihood of that being true? And then what are the different paths that might allow that? Yeah. So the, so it's absolutely true that, that the, the lending community. So, so in Kansas, we have the Kansas Bankers Association, and then nationally, I think it's the American Bankers Association. 
and they are act actually lobbying for a more streamlined forgiveness process for loans under 150,000. That is, that is definitely something that is in the works or at least in discussion. Uh, but from my standpoint, the way that unfolds is um, our congressional delegation uh, and then also and then ultimately the national body you know of Congress there will will negotiate uh, that if that becomes uh, enacted, then uh, that would be something that SBA would have oversight of that and that would be done in, in combination between the SBA and the banking community. But we don't have that uh, process in place yet. Uh, that's being advocated or, or lobbied, you know, by the American Bankers Association. So yeah, that it's not effective yet, but I suspect it, it's probably going to come about given the widespread uh, interest and, um, you know, in it. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Do you think that would happen before Congress adjourns on October 2nd? Or is that I think it's a good chance. I, I think it's a good chance, but you know, <laughs> I, I, like you, I'm, I'm in a holding pattern well, and, and well, and I don't mean an overall bill. I've given up all hope that no, they're going to do that, anything that, before that'll be a part of an overall bill. That's but, the only way it's, okay. and it has a lot of support from yeah. all Congress. Yeah, I think that one, I think there's a very good chance that that one will go through, you know, it be, because it, 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 it's got bipartisan, bipartisan uh, support. Uh, and they're just trying to streamline the process and uh, but it's just we'll see how whatever it gets attached to that's where the you know the the challenges will come in yeah specifically what's being proposed is that just all loans under 150 are automatically forgiven and the banks i know our bank we have merit trusts and they're just waiting for that and so they're not they don't want us they don't want to mess with it i mean yeah they don't I, want them more to dedicate staff time for those smaller loans than it was. That's exactly to. it. That, that's exactly it. So so from a borrower standpoint, it's not costing you anything at the moment uh, for the lender to pause to yeah. see if this change comes about because it'll save everybody time and resources. And so we'll see. I think there's a good chance that that streamline, you know, across the board, 150,000 forgiveness. I think there's a good chance but it's not final yet, so we've just got to wait and see. Uh, we've got just a few weeks, so I, I suspect something will be decided by October 2nd. All right, well, then I do, Wayne. Yeah, so <laughs> we're dealing with the, the federal people. Well, I'm sure you deal with them on a daily basis as well, but just good night. Mm -hmm. I have, yeah. we've lost a lot of faith in the last six months. <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand, but you know, I've got to, I, no. <laughs> I, 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 I do understand, but I've got to stay optimistic. Yeah, no, we right, appreciate you're good, you're everything good. you do. Yeah. I'm not trying to knock anything that the SBA has done. We're in the optimism boat too, Wayne. That's the only way to get through. Right? Or, yeah, either otherwise, <laughs> we're just going to start crying all the time. Yeah. So. Uh, understood, understood, <laughs> understood. We're going to have to go over to uh, the Orange Theory uh, gym and work out some of this uh, anxiety and stress. Yeah. That's that. yeah. Sure. All right. Well, um, we're, we're out of time. We're getting close out of time. Um, last item on the agenda is just uh, progress on the email campaign. Uh, I do see that there has been uh, some, because uh, I've been CC'd on them, but more so I think towards the county when it comes to some of the resources they have from uh, some of our small uh, businesses who were, have been working to, I, I guess, get more um, to, to get more response from from those who have access to to uh, to to money to resources. So, uh, any real quick updates on that? Anyone wants to put in? I just uh, on the county side, I, I try not to follow the county's meetings. Uh, I, I, I sit through enough of my own meetings. Um, my understanding, though, is that they were meeting with um, bar owners uh, yesterday. Um, that they they are what I what looks like progressing, and I, I think that Tom still being on the call helps um, give us updates on that. But uh, is there any other? Uh, I, I'll just briefly say I did speak with um, uh, Congresswoman Estes yesterday. Uh, it doesn't look like it doesn't look like we're going to be getting the feds to do much. Um, which, now and whenever they stop uh, we actually 
Our lobbyist is telling us um, that there's something being floated around. Nothing's, nothing's been made public, but it's sounding like there might be maybe another round of PPP go out before the end of the year to tide us over until the next, um, the next, what's that called? The, the next session of Congress begins in September. So I don't know, we've been on, um, Eva's been on a number of calls in the last two weeks. We've probably been, our members have been asked probably about 20 times over the last two weeks if that would help. I don't know if it's true, like I said, um, but it, it sounds like it's something they're not wanting to make public. They're just asking constituents about. So PP, PPP, I think has been a lifeline for small businesses. Uh, probably one of the few variables keep people afloat. So let's hope that they do that at the very least. Um, yeah, I, I'm kind of like a lot of y'all where we, <laughs> I'm not going to get angry, I guess, but, uh, you know, we, the feds have a role in this and let's hope, let's encourage them to step up and fulfill that role. Um, but, you know, I was pretty blunt with them on our Zoom call where, you know, we need money, you know, like we need, we need you guys to go help us out with this. We don't print money, you do like help us with, you know, help our small businesses. If they go away, they're not coming back, right? Like. Uh, so, but you know, he's a, he, he's a, um, somewhat new to Congress. I mean, he's, I, I think kind of just, uh, doing what he can, um, as a, as a newer member, uh, as you know, he's not like the chair of appropriations or anything. So he's doing what he can and hopefully they'll come up with something, but we'll have plan B, which is to try to squeeze every resource we have at the local and state level. Uh, but just one. Yeah, that's where we're at here. And, and we started reaching out from business owners, I think, to the county, and you were probably CC'd on some of those. We haven't started a public campaign yet, but that's in queue, just seeing how we don't want to do that because we know that nobody likes getting a thousand emails in their inbox in one day or 4,000 or whatever, but, you know. We're gonna do what we have to do. <laughs> nobody's listening, you know, like. Yeah. Or you know. do it, right? <laughs> like, or like, like. I would suggest if anybody does want to email the county, um, what we have found works best on our other levels of lobbying and i have heard that um you know the county really appreciates hearing really personal stories and include numbers include what your revenue loss over 2019 has been include what you pay in taxes um and then like include what your what kind of personal sacrifices your family has had to make or your business um so include numbers and include oh if you have any i don't know if anybody else has to deal with economic or economic impact that might just be the entertainment field um but those kind of numbers really make a difference like you know what if, try to convince them that this is an investment in the community as opposed to just a lifeline right like i know yeah, the yeah. funny thing is is it's not taxpayer money i mean it is but it's not like they not, generated it in Cedric County. It was money right. given to my feds to, to give to people to help. Well, yeah, and this whole <laughs> idea of like, you know, they're on the hook if, you know, the, the money doesn't get repaid. But it's it, to me, so I think what we're trying to do is really um, showcase that that's a really short term issue. Like, okay, yeah, you might have to pay this back now, but if a bunch of us go out of business and we're not paying taxes in the next few years, you know, and I, and I don't know about you guys, but if you guys go under, how many people are going to stay here? <laughs> We're going to back out <laughs> if, we, if we don't make it here we're not staying like we last year alone we got a couple of jobs we got business opportunities elsewhere and we decided to stay here um so yeah. like make those cases that from what we've seen that helps especially here at the county level to really showcase that you know this is not necessarily historically been a place where people want to stay um let's stress that if y'all want these comments like they haunt my dreams like you're right like we as mayor uh going through this crisis we like to think it's short term we're gonna wake up one day have a vaccine everything's gonna go right back to normal like this there's pro progressive damage happening in our economy uh and in the real lives of people you know and we're not just talking about those who are dying everyone focuses on the number of folks who are dying like if you catch this and you don't have insurance you're financially ruined if you need hospitalization you know like if you know, I get um, that people want to open up their business because they need to feed their or help their employees, feed their families. If they're if they're not following safety precautions, and let's say they do give their employees health insurance, like that five thousand dollar deductible, if their employee catches this because you know they weren't following the the orders, that that that's a five thousand dollar check that has to go now to the hospital. Like 
there's a lot on the line, like both short term and, and long term. And we're not economically without even talking about the the fact that, you know, people like us on this call, we might be healthy and then not know it. We went and gave this to grandma during during uh, some family gathering right and now. She she might be fighting for her life like that's the there's a lot going on with this, but you're exactly right. We this is the time and I'll tell you just as an elected and someone who's been doing this for too long or right, like over the eight years, it feels like too long, right? Um, you're exactly right that the click here emails that send a generic blast to every elected official are an, more annoying than helpful, right? Because it, it, you wind up like, oh, it, it's a short force when you get like a thousand emails, like, but they're all like the click here emails. You're right. If you add uh, some, um, some type of short story, uh, some type of uh, alteration, something that makes the email actually look like it came from a person and not a bot. Uh, it, it holds a lot more weight um, and, and it helps. Uh, I mean, when we did the mask ordinance, I'll just tell you, when we did the mask ordinance, I had to call the emergency meeting. Uh, one of my colleagues who was angry that we were doing an emergency meeting uh, said that, um, well, I haven't heard from my constituents yet if they want masks or not. So we, I used my email list to, in my social media said, hey, if you support masks, go send an email to these people uh, and generate over a thousand emails in one night. And it was one, it's, and they were angry about that, right? But in the end, we did the right thing. Like hearing from people really does help. Uh, and we all kind of roll our eyes at a lot of emails, but they, they actually do usually wind up with action, particularly at the quality, if they're not just a click here. Uh, so, um, so I agree, I just want to kind of back up the hard keys on Thank you. On the, the power of uh, reaching out and actually showing that, um, you know, that the public really wants this right now, really care about this. So um, with that, it, we are exactly 15 minutes over, which puts us on time, uh, <laughs> considering how we normally do this. Um, our next meeting is October 2nd at 9 a.m. Um, we'll get that agenda out to you guys. I think this is a really good meeting today where we got to get other folks here. Um, I, uh, that's about it. Is there any, um, anything at the very end for the good of the body that we want to mention now, or we could just take yes. these online I, emails? Andrew, is that you? Like, just really quickly. I just want you to know that if you email the county, they have the right, that's public record. So if you, do, I, I like sharing data, but if you don't want people to know your profit and loss statement, don't send it to the county because there have been county commissioners that have posted people's messages online. I don't want that to be something that just keep that in mind. That's my only suggestion. Really good point, yeah. Andy. Yeah, if you want everybody to know, <laughs> then send it yeah. in. Yeah, I mean, and that's the other thing. Like, keep in mind that any email I get or send to my government email address is, can be cored, right? Like, can absolutely be, unless it's deleted and gone, um, it, it can be, uh, the the news can core it and they can put it, put it in, in an article. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's all public. Uh, so just like these meetings, right? Like anything we say here can be, uh, can be seen by other people. So, but good point. I, I have a question. This is Felicia. If anybody could either answer in an email or if we could discuss it at our next meeting, I've had some people, um, small businesses ask if anyone is aware of any type of, um, ability to renegotiate current leases with businesses that are struggling because of this, because of being, you know, like for instance, us, we were closed down for nine weeks and there were several people that were in the same boat. And I don't know the answer to that. I told them that I've been reaching out to different people trying to find out if they're, um, if anybody has heard of anything like that. So there's something I'll be working on this week uh, with some of our partners in the business community about um, on my Harvard Zoom mayor training, whatever classes I take every other week, uh, we get presented with some of the best resources really in the world uh, from the smartest people when it comes to this stuff. And one of the things that they're discussing is how to approach um, uh, landlords of big, big, uh, big rental, you know, where lots of businesses are in, right? Um, where instead of going to the small business and trying to get like tax credits or negotiation with the, through the small business, you might have a problem, uh, not as much lending power, I guess, um, go to the landlord 
and see if you can negotiate something with the landlord uh, that houses, you know, like 10 businesses. Um, because one of the problems with small businesses when it comes to rent if, is every time in this scenario, when they, they write a rent check, that's when they decide if they're going to stay in business, right? Is right then, like, am I going to pay next month's rent? Uh, and if we were able to get some type of relief or tax credits or some negotiated deal with the person who owns the building or the LLC that actually owns the entire facility, uh, we to kind of help out all of, of the small businesses there, we, we'd have a better bang for our buck was the what was pretty much the message of the call or the Zoom. Um, so I think that there there is uh, movement on from a macro level, movement on that type of policy, uh, that type of strategy. Uh, but as far as uh, small businesses negotiating themselves, uh, I mean, I can open up to folks on a call, but I know, cause I, 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 don't, I don't know anything about what, what the day to day is with small businesses with it. But I do know that at the national level, they're talking about policy or to people like me uh, that we should be looking towards. Okay. Yeah, there's brand protection being proposed on the national level as part of the overall bigger package for sure. Um, the, the biggest issue that um, I've seen with other venues is landlords will get deferments on their mortgage but not pass that down to the tenants. And so they're still charging the tenants full price. Uh, so I don't, I don't know, some oversight on, you know, if a Yeah, and I know that is something that has happened locally. That specific issue has happened here in town. Uh, I've wondered if that's been happening because you know I've had some people tell me that certain people aren't being upfront with funding they may have received um, and that's just been a discussion with a small group of people that I've had and I wondered if that maybe was possibly happening. And I'll just say that puts people at a risk. I think some of that funding's public on who gets that or who does. I was talking to a reporter not too long ago um, and he made a comment that they know who's who gets PPP who gets some of this federal funding uh so if there's a business out there not you know who, who got somewhat of a you know, landlord got federal money got pretty much everything they can and not helping out you know their tenants and out there looking for more like there, there's there's a way to fact check that situation so Right. And maybe not everyone knows that, but There's just no specific regulation that says they have to right now, though, that they have to give rent deferments. Um, so that's that's the big issue is there's nothing by law that forces them to, you know, to pass rent. that through. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing protecting the renters. Yeah, there's no yeah. Rent, renter protection. Okay. Yeah, and it's difficult also to find out. I mean, what if the um, the landlord is listed under a name completely different. You know, what if what if the LLC that has your your lease is listed under an umbrella LLC? You know, it's almost difficult to find out who that is and if people are, are being up front. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, we have bad actors out there, I think. Well, well, let me look more into uh, between now and then I'll look more into uh, uh, the type of programs that are, are supposed to be helping towards small business rent. Uh, let me Thank you. see what other policies are happening. I do. I have a whole bunch of notes. I was exhausted yesterday. I had a lot of meetings. Uh, and by the time I did my two hour online class, uh, I just screenshot like every slide because it was amazing information. But and I took notes, but I was way too mentally drained at that point to really put it together. So I needed to revisit that, put it back together, and then start, I think, floating around some of the policy and seeing who's doing it good who's, and who can we copy, I guess, really. I mean, that's what good policy is, right? You figure out who's who's learning the kinks, like, uh, and, and you, you kind of take their idea. I mean, that's what good cities do. Uh, so we'll figure out what's happening uh, in other cities and see if there's something we can mimic out here. We probably have to involve if it has CARES Act money or something like that. We probably have to involve the county, but yeah, you know, we'll we'll see what we can do. All right. Thank so with you. that, of course, uh, we're we're now officially late. Uh, so I appreciate everyone staying on. And as always, uh, you know, uh, with these calls, we we get folks who 
have another meeting, you got to jump off. So uh, please don't feel obligated if you got something else going on that you stay on um, when, we, when we run past past the scheduled hour. Uh, so I just do want to apologize. I do uh, appreciate everyone on this call and respect your time, but also I'm very long winded and I am a professor and also a politician. So I probably keep, I'm probably the reason why we're on an extra 24 minutes because I can't shut up. So I apologize, but I appreciate you all. Um, and um, we will uh, uh, take the discussion offline and uh, see you all at the next meeting. Thank you. Take care. Yes.